everyone, I'm Blaine and welcome to the Place Your Trades Network. We are the network that focuses on trading daily options using CME Group's event contracts to trade the E-mini S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, Russell 2000, gold, silver, euro, crude oil, natty gas, and copper. Today we have a great show for you with Jonah Lupton. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Tradebate, which has built a custom app dedicated to trading CME Group event contracts. This is what we're all using at Place Your Trades. Over the next month, we are giving away a trip to Las Vegas. I'll be there. One winner will join the PYT team at the Money Show on April 24th through the 26th. All you have to do is go to placeyourtrades.com slash Vegas and sign up before March 1st. On March 1st at 4 p.m. We will have a special show for you and we will spin the wheel to see who wins the trip to Vegas. Guys, this is a very cool giveaway and I suggest you enter. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Market's green, so I'm happy today. Market is green and choppy. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. I'm a big NASDAQ trader and I do feel as though the NASDAQ is fairly bullish, like where it is in the chart right now. So I'm innately a massive bear. Like I very much enjoy trading the downside, but I think I'm bullish. Who knows though? You know, I almost feel like the market may not care what Powell says anymore because they almost feel like he's going to talk hawkish. We all know he's going to talk hawkish, but the data suggests that they're almost done hiking, that inflation's coming down. And I just don't think anyone believes him anymore. I just, I think he's lost so much of his credibility, you know, on the way up or on the way down with rates and now on the way up. My concern now is just, you know, can earnings hold up and valuations, uh, multiples and that sort of thing. I think, I think the inflation stuff and the rate hike stuff is pretty much behind us at this point. Now the focus is on, you know, the economy and, and earnings. You got a dog back there, right? I do. I do. That's my dog, Mango. Is that a poodle? He's like, a golden doodle. Oh, gold, yeah. There's a yeah. my building is full of them. Like yeah. half the dogs in my building are the, the golden doodles now. Yep. I have two little kids and I really wanted them to grow up with a dog that they really loved. And his temperament is just right. so good. And the they're very friendly. I don't don't hear much barking from them. So mine barks. Anthony oh, actually oh, really? the other day was like, Your dog barks a lot. <laughs> and they don't they don't shed, right? They don't shed. They're they don't shed. Right? Okay. They don't shed. This show is called The Intermediate Trader, and I named it after where I am in my own trading journey. And I wanted to just ask you sort of what that title means to you. I've been investing for 20 years. You know, I, I got into the business back in 2002 when I graduated college. So, I mean, I guess 20 year anniversary. Um, trading is still just a smaller component of what I do overall. I mean, I'm still more of a long-term investor. So I know there's the 80-20 rule, you know, when I was in sales and wealth management, you know, they always said like, you know, 80% of your time should be spent on, you know, your top 20% of your clients because you want to replicate your best clients. And a lot of times it's the other way around. Like you end up spending, you know, 80% of your time on the bottom 20% of your clients, right? Because they just kind of a, a pain in the ass. Um, with trading and investing, it sort of feels that way. Like even though trade my trading account is about 20% of my overall capital, I probably spend 80% of my time on my trading account. You know, I mean, every morning I'm up at 4.30 in the morning and I spend an hour and a half or two hours going through charts, putting together my my morning newsletter. And I try to get that out at like 7 or 7.30 so I can go to the gym, work out, and then be back at my desk before the market opens at 9.30. Um, so I spend way more time on my trading portfolio, despite it being a smaller portion of my overall capital. Um, and you know, last year, my trading portfolio did better than my investment portfolio. And this year, so far, it's been my investment portfolio outperforming my trading portfolio, you know, just because it's I'm investing in growth stocks and growth stocks have had, you know, a great start to the year uh, versus a lot of the, you know, the, the stocks that I trade, you know, really haven't been breaking out the way that they were last year. So, sure. but I mean, I feel like on the investing side, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely a guy that focuses on fundamentals and valuation. And when it comes to trading, I'm less focused on valuations and multiples and fundamentals and more focused on, you know, buying stocks that are in uptrends and using tight, top, uh, tight stop losses, looking for breakouts. Uh, I don't trade earnings. 
you know, if we were, you know, I started a few new positions this morning. If we were getting CPI tomorrow morning, for instance, at 8.30, there's no way I'd be starting new positions right now that I'd be planning to, you know, hold overnight because your stop losses aren't going to help you at 8. Um, you know, vers versus, you know, Powell at two o'clock during market hours. I'm not worried because I'll have stop losses on all my positions. So if he says something that spooks the market and the market sells off, I'll just get stopped out of all my positions. So, but like, I don't, I don't like chasing stocks. I, I, tr I would prefer to buy the stocks that I think can be like the next market leader and buy them as they pull back to their, you know, like I love buying stocks at the eight as they pull back to their eight, 10 day moving average with a tight stop under the 10 or buy them as they're pulling back to like their 21, 23 day with a tight stop under the 23. Or maybe there's like a VWAP in there, you know, to provide some support. So I try to keep my losses under like one to 2%. So like, for instance, this morning I got stopped out of BHP. I got stopped out of US Steel and I got stopped out of Hologic and I broke even on US Steel and my losses on BHP and Hologic were both under 1%. So, you know, like this year, like year to date, my average loss is about one and a half percent. My average winner is like just over 5%. So, you know, a little bit less than where I'd like it to be. But if I can have like a 60, 70% win rate, and I can keep my winners at five or six percent and my losers at under one and a half percent, you know, over the course of the year, I'll, I'll do pretty well. That's kind of my trading strategy in a nutshell. I love that the power that comes with being able to very succinctly describe what your trading strategy is. I was not able to do that. Well, I've only been trading for like two and a half years, but oh, it took me a really long time to be able to get like an elevator pitch of what I do as a trader. And yours was excellent. I <laughs> really like that. And I think it changes from time to time, especially as the market changes and the market gives you different conditions to work with. I mean, you know, last year was obviously a crazy year where traders probably outperformed investors because, you know, I mean, unless you were invested in like consumer staples, utilities and healthcare you probably had a bad year. You know, I mean, my my growth portfolio was obviously down last year, but it's still up tremendously from, you know, 2020 versus the traders last year probably did pretty well if they were sticking to their strategy, keeping their losses tight and also throwing on some shorts or, you know, using some some hedges and puts and not and whatnot. So, you know, shorting is not my strength. So I really don't even pretend to try to do it. You know, I'm either in equities long or I'm, I'm going to hold cash and you know, every once in a while, I'll, I'll throw on some of those inverse uh, ETFs. Like I'll do that in my investment portfolio sometimes. Like, you know, back when we were getting these huge moves in 2022, where the market would rally three, four percent in the morning and my portfolio would be up, you know, six, seven percent by 10 in the morning. I would start buying the SQQQ, you know, the inverse triple leveraged ETF uh, just to lock in my gains for the day. And if the market fades, you know, those inverse ETFs will will make up for, you know, my stocks pulling back. So, but I don't do that. Like, I don't really do that stuff in my trading portfolio. That's, that's more of my investment stuff. Since we are on the Place Your Trades Network and since this podcast is sponsored by Tradeabate, I do want to talk for a second about the daily options that we speak of here on Place Your Trades. A lot of people have actually been using these daily options on futures as a hedge to their long-term positions or just their daily positions. So, it's very like interesting here because all you really have to do is choose if you think the E-mini S&P is going to close above or below 4050. And of course, there's a strike list. But a lot of people have been hedging in the middle of the day if they're up a lot and they maybe want to take some no's or they think the market's going to pull back. So I just think that's an interesting yeah. use. I'll do that. I mean, I'll do that sometimes. That yeah. I mean, in my investment portfolio where I, I'm more conscious about you know, holding my positions and trying to, you know, get those long-term capital gains. You know, my long-term investment portfolio is way more like focused on long-term tax efficient gains versus my trading portfolio, where I'm obviously churning the hell out of the account. So I do think hedging in an investment portfolio is for me, it's more important. So I'll either use those inverse ETFs, like I said, or I'll buy some, I'll buy some puts, you know, some QQQ puts, IWM puts, ARKK puts, you know, ARC's, ARC's ETF is great for buying options against as well. <laughs> You're really speaking my language. IWM puts are my, my path to glory as a trader. I really love those. I just recently tried to trade some zero DTEs and just got 
destroyed. Right. Like, so I got my entry on the zero DTEs, held them, they were red. And then it like came back up to where my entry was. And I took the exact same strike, everything, but like a month out. And by the end of the day, the ones that were a month out were worth $2,000. And the the exact same calls and the exact same strikes that were zero DTEs, I took a thousand dollar loss on. Yeah, those things. Like, move. ooh, fate is fun. Like, they move so fast. <laughs> I, know. I, I don't think I've ever bought a zero DTE option in my life. I just, it's almost like gambling. I mean, you're, you know, you're playing some sort of an event, I suppose, right? Yes, but I mean, I let me just say from my experience, don't do it. It's right. just like lighting money on fire. So I, mean, I can see it. Like if you're if you're staring at a chart and you think a stock or the index is going to bounce at a you know at a particular level or get rejected at a level, you know, and you want to make some quick money, I mean, I suppose that's the way to do it. You know, that's how you're going to get the most leverage out of your trade. But you know, I just that's just not my expertise. I'll I'll do too much damage to my account if I play around in that stuff. Going forward, I'm going to stick with these event contract daily options if I want to take, if I want to go against the grain or, you know, think we're going to reject somewhere and just, uh, I think <laughs> for me, it's going to make my heart feel a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to see, are there any tools that you have implemented that have really become like a game changer for you in the last few years? And it can be a software, hardware, anything like that. I mean, to be honest, the one that I use the most is TrendSpider for charting. I mean, I, I probably spend five or six hours a day in TrendSpider looking at charts. So, you know, I have my investment portfolio watch list and then my trading portfolio. And then I have my first watch list for uh, new positions, second watch list, and then my shorts. So, I mean, I always have five or six watch lists open at, at all times. But yeah, TrendSpider has been a game changer. I mean, I, Ticker, are you familiar with Ticker at all? T-I-K-R. No. Um, so that's for like getting estimates and fundamentals for companies. So on the investing side of things, I spent a lot of time in ticker looking at estimates from the analysts. You know what the strat is? I've heard of it, but I couldn't explain it. Mm, that's okay. Uh, we have a host on here who is an expert at the strat and I really love TrendSpider because they will show the strat candles on there. Like it's a very cool little piece of TrendSpider that I love. I really like the strap because it looks for continuation on many different time frames. So it'll have right, the monthly, right. the weekly, the daily, and it all is just a lot of evidence that you can use to make your decision. I'm a big, big fan of the strat. So sometimes, I mean, I do trade like that. Like for instance, a couple of the positions I started today were stocks that, you know, let's say they hit a recent high last week, you know, they put in a big wick and then over the last three or four days, they've been pulling back on lighter volume. So you have like this little DTL setting up right down trend line. And, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll buy the breakout, but I want to make sure that we'd at least take out yesterday's highs, like take out yesterday's wick. Otherwise, you know, we're most, you know, there's a good shot. We just get rejected there. So, you know, like I spent a lot of time looking at, the, you know, those horizontal levels to make sure that we're, we're clearing previous day wicks before I waste my time getting into it. Love a level. I mean, levels are just really integral. And I feel like I've done it all. I've done trend lines. I've done flat. I traded just flags for a while. Uh, a big EMA trader for a long time and just could not find any sort of way to continually make money until uh, I switched to levels. And now all I use are levels in the whole wave. What's it it's called? The whole wave, H-U-L-L. -L. Never even heard of it. So it's basically kind of like, it's like a 10 EMA, but it will turn green, red, and yellow. And you can use it as you would an EMA. Like if it gets above the whole wave and it's green underneath, that's a bullish signal and vice versa. And, okay. but I like the yellow because you're like caution, right? It could like slow down here. It's not a strong green, big fan. Like I'll look at MACD indicator yes. at the bottom of my screen you know, just to see trends and whatnot. I feel like I'm better at buying the breakouts. I mean, the two breakouts I look for are the breakouts above, you know, previous highs, right? So that's horizontal, that's level. And then the breakouts, you know, stocks that are pulling back, you know, healthy, constructive pullbacks to their, you know, five day, eight day, 10 day, that sort of thing. But I don't, I mean, I when I buy these stocks, like I always look to see where the VWAP is from the all time high, because I don't want to buy a stock as it breaks out just to have it get rejected at some VWAP. 
you know, right, right above the, you know, right above the DTL. So, you know, like that's why I spend so much time looking at charts. I mean, I feel like every chart you look at, I mean, you know, I need to spend five or 10 minutes sticking all these VWAPs in there and looking at all the moving averages and drawing all the lines to try to figure out if it's, you know, if it's even worth starting a position or just going on to the next one. I traded with a trader, his name's Real Simple Ariel, and he trades identically to you from what I can tell. Um, and he will buy a stock as it crosses over the previous day's high, and then his stop is always low of day. So his risk is tiny and yeah. the upside is incredible. And I am absolutely obsessed with that way of trading because so it just takes all the emotion out of it. Right. So I started a position today and I don't know if I can even share my screen. So I think you can. So you got it. I got it. OK, so one of the positions I got into today was the Labu, which is the 3X leverage biotech ETF. I started this position today, like right in here, 824 when it pushed through the five day. And then my stop loss is just below the low of the day. SHC started this position as it pushed through this DTL through the five day, the DTL. Stop loss on this is just below the 1641 right here. So below this VWAP, CECO. So we started this position today when it broke through the DTL and took out these two wicks. So it got in at like 1415. Stop loss is just below the low of the day. AXSM bought this position at 7419. So after we push through and clear this wick from yesterday, and then I would add to it. So then I'll add to this position if we break out here and then take out this wick from I guess three, four days ago. And then the last position I started today was, so this is a little bit different than like my typical, you know, buying breakouts. So Target Hospitality, I sold this one a couple of weeks ago on the way up. I thought we'd get a pullback. I didn't think we'd pull back this far. Fundamentals are really strong. I know the company pretty well. So I started a position today. I let it, you know, bounce down here. Uh, after it bounced, came back through the 50 day EMA. I started a position right there around 1575 with a stop loss just below the lows of the day. That looks like a nice daily doji candle, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. for now. Yep. So downtrend breaks are your preferred way of trading, is that right? Yeah, as long as if the stock's in an uptrend for the most part, you know, above most of the moving averages, like, you know, one of my worst stocks over the last year has been CrowdStrike. Like, I don't really care about trading CrowdStrike, even if it breaks out of this little DTL right here. You know, you got the 50 days, you got all these VWAPs, um, I don't want to have to push through all that resistance. So I'd rather trade a stock like four, you know, that's been in this long uptrend for the last six months. You know, I'm not in this. I mean, this one's in my investment portfolio. It's not in my trading portfolio, but this is the kind of stock I'd rather buy. Honestly, um, a beautiful chart. So Lan Lantheus is one that's in my investment portfolio. And I just added it to my trading portfolio a couple of days ago, uh, looking for this to so this breakout here. So I put, I added Lantheus to my trading portfolio yesterday, hoping we'd get this breakout today, which we got, you know, it's kind of faded off the highs of the day, but that's the kind of DTL breakout that I like. This is my main watch list going into today. This is where I love to buy, I, I love to buy these types of stocks, right? Strong uptrend above all the moving averages. You don't have to worry about any VWAPs or anything. The only thing you'd have to get through is this previous high. You know, you get two or three days of a pullback into the short term moving averages. And I look to start positions at like the eight day or the nine day with a tight stop loss just below the 10. And that is a beautiful chart. I can't like read. What that, is that? Uh, ACL, ACLS. Gorgeous. So that's, that's my absolute favorite trading setup right there. I only have a few minutes left and I really want to hear about your conference that you started and sort of the value of community to you so yeah i mean back during covid uh i had the crazy idea to do a conference bring everybody together you know i mean fintwit is this big community i mean there's obviously lots of different dimensions to fintwit and you know you got your growth guys your value guys your hedge fund people and you know some of us like each other some of us hate each other i mean you know how it is like it's it's like high school all over again uh but you know for during covid you know most of us were spending a lot of time on Twitter talking about stocks, sharing charts, sharing research. Some of us were starting sub stacks and newsletters and that sort of thing. But most of us have never met in person. So 
I decided to try to put together a conference. And so we hosted the first conference in October of 2021, I think it was, down at the Ritz Carlton in Orlando. Oh, and I've was, been there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful hotel. Unfortunately, like shame on me for not realizing that because it was COVID, you know, the tail end of COVID, nobody was really traveling. The, the hotels were not full. You know, we got great rates from the hotel. We got, you know, like they really, they treated us really, really well. And everything went so smooth, so perfect. I mean, there were some problems like this was when the, uh, one of the variants was starting to spike and people were getting nervous about traveling again. So I actually tried to cancel it or postpone it, but the hotel wouldn't let me. So we did it. I think we had like 225 people show up. So it was great. And then we did the next one in Vegas, which was a massive mistake. Uh oh. Because if you remember, like after people started traveling again, you know, everything started like all the prices for hotels and airfare started to spike. So there were people that were literally having to pay like twelve or $1,300 just to fly to Vegas. And then the rooms were three fifty dollars a piece. And then the ticket and it, like it just became such an expensive, you know, two or three day trip that a lot of people were kind of turned off to it. So we didn't hit the numbers that we thought we were going to. So we ended up losing a lot of money on it. So I'm done with conferences. You're done. I, first one went great. Second one. I mean, everyone that attended the second one had a wonderful time. Tons of food, tons of drinks, great speakers, great venue. It just, when you lose money on something like that, it just totally turns you off to doing another one. It's too bad because it was fun getting to meet everyone in person and hanging out for a couple of days with people that you talk to Twitter on, you know, that you talk to all the time on Twitter, but too much time and effort. Like I got, I got too many other things I got to worry about nowadays. So hosting conferences is, it's in the past. <laughs> now, now, as you can see, DJing is my new thing. <laughs> Ooh, that's exciting. Also, is that a Christmas tree? Yeah, my mom gave it to me, and I feel bad taking it down. <laughs> is it is, is it fake? Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> I'm a I'm a big fan of a fake tree. My husband and I have a massive argument every Christmas, and we end up with one real, one fake. But also, <laughs> if he was in charge, we'd still have the tree up. He loves the lights, the ambiance. So respect. So that's how I feel. Like I wake up in the middle of the night, or I wake up at four thirty in the morning, and it's always dark in my apartment. But like, so that's sort of like the one bright thing when I wake up it kind of puts me in a good mood to see so it's cozy yeah it's kind of cold and boring and dark in here without it so it does it lights up my my living room I love it well on the Vegas note please do enter the PYT Vegas giveaway for the money show I will here we go here we go it's on the <laughs> banner at the bottom Vegas is great you can come hang out with the whole PYT crew we're all gonna be there so you know we'd love to have you so enter the giveaway well thank you so much for your time today I really enjoyed getting to know you and thanks for uh walking me through some of those charts oh you're welcome happy to do it anytime you want okay thank you